has been a joy to welcome you, our visitors and our volunteers back onto the excavation this year. We've had to work really hard to catch up with a difficult 2020, but I am so proud of what we've achieved and so excited to show you all, all of the beautiful buildings that we've uncovered during the course of this summer. So here we are inside a third century building constructed in about 213 AD. Above this third century building, we had a church, which if you remember, was excavated in 2019 originally and produced the really beautiful chalice. As we remove the church and the fourth century building that was above this structure that you see behind me, we uncovered what we think is a beautiful scola. A scola is a officer's mess and as such contains all of the facilities that the officers would need in order to have their food prepared for them. Take a look at this beautiful oven. It's got a central channel there and you can really see the red colouring of the stone where the heat has produced some burning. We've got three ovens inside the scola and potentially there would have been so much more than that. In fact, in the last room to the east, we have evidence of the fireplaces changing position quite frequently and even some postals indicating that the scola might have had wooden partition buildings. Inside the scola, we had a number of really interesting finds. From this oven and its vicinity, we had a rather lovely weight, which might have been used as a counterweight for a bellows. From the floors of the scola, we had all that you expect in a high status building. Belt buckles and brooches lost or abandoned during a meal or a feast. It is interesting to note that the scola was subject to a number of modifications through time. So later on in the season, we discovered that a little building had been added to the scola. And you're looking at it right now behind my shoulders. That building extends towards the south of the site and it's really kind of a different construction style. The two buildings don't merge. The following building is composed of much larger blocks which are just butt jointed onto the scola. Is this an extension kitchen? What, what are we looking at? Only looking at the finds and at the pottery will answer this question. However, as we continued our excavation, we found that there was another third century building immediately south of the Scola. It is interesting to note that the Scola has got a very unusual plan. It is a long and narrow east-west oriented building. And exactly the same frame is repeated to its immediate south. However, in the building to the south of the Scola, we have found no trace of ovens as of yet. There is quite a lot of buildings concentrated in a very small area and the sequence is really difficult to extract. Interestingly, in the building behind me, we found something very, very cool. A very small but perfectly formed portable altar carved out of sandstone. A naked figure stood on the altar, embracing a horse. We are not quite sure who this figure is because, very unhelpfully, the Romans haven't left an inscription. However, we do have different theories. He could be Mars, the god of war. He could be Mercury, the god of travel. Or a suggestion has been made that he could be one of two Dioscores. The Dioscores are Castor and Pollux. They are much loved by cavalry. This building right behind me dates around 300 AD and is contemporary with the cavalry occupation of this and the neighboring quadrant of the fort. So it seems logical that a god so firmly connected with the cavalry would make an appearance in this area. I'm now walking on what would have been one of the main arteries of transport in the fort at Vindolanda during the third and especially the fourth century. What we have uncovered in this area is the remains of a 
north-south oriented rectangular barrack that you can see right here. This is a cross wall that indicates the end of the barrack and the barrack is divided into four small rectangular rooms. After 409 AD, which is the traditionally accepted date for the end of Roman Britain, it looks like this building would have still been in good shape. This means that the sub-Roman and post-Roman occupants of Vindolanda, our very own brand of Vindolanda Christians, built many, many structures within the boundaries of this building. As we can clearly see small rooms bolted onto the walls and a number of postals and various other structures like ovens appearing within the external boundaries of the cavalry barracks. To the south of the barrack, we have a self-standing independent building which underwent at least two phases of construction, a larger phase and a smaller phase. In between the two, we witnessed a ceiling collapse and a roof collapse, which meant that in one of the two rooms, delimited by the walls, we had an amazing coverage of roof tiles and roof shingles that were very carefully excavated by our volunteer team. At the crossroads between what we like to call Granary Road and the Cavalry Barrack, we have a rather large space which is covered in roughly facing stones. This large cobbled yard is crossed by a lovely drain and not much else. While this is not great from the point of view of our understanding of the 4th century occupation of the site. It is marvellous to see such an open space that we can investigate and we can deepen our understanding of the deeper anaerobic layers of the site by removing this courtyard layer and going underneath. Um, we started the job this year in 2021 and began to lift this 4th century and 5th century courtyard. And immediately below it, we are starting to get, very interestingly, skipping the 213 layer, the first remains of roundhouses. So here we have the first remains of a stone roundhouse, which is being cut out by the remains of what looks like a timber roundhouse. We had never seen timber roundhouses in the Severn layer before. We'd seen them in other earlier layers. However, this is really interesting because the timber structure seems to cut out the stone structure. What was the timber structure for? We will know more about this next year when we complete its excavation by continuing the removal of the 4th century yard. Immediately below the roundhouses, we have the Antonine layer. The Antonine layer of the excavation dates between 160 and 200 AD. We've uncovered only a tiny little bit of this layer. We've got a lovely cobbled surface, which you can see behind my shoulders, and traces of a rather large building starting to appear. The building is right behind my shoulders and extends below the foundations of the 4th century cavalry barrack. The building in itself, the Antonine building, is composed of several little rooms. It could either be a traditional barrack or another thing that often has more than one room and is traditionally partitioned in small spaces, is a hospital. In 2017, we excavated a beautiful courtyard building from the neighboring quadrant. So we have great expectations for the Antonine layer in this excavation area. So what have we uncovered this year? We've had a fantastic journey in this quadrant, ranging from numerous postals and sub-Roman and post-Roman structures, some amazing Christian remains, two whole churches, a lot of beautiful Christian artifacts. And then we've lowered those areas and explored the fourth century buildings like the Cavalry Barrack and Granary Way and this beautiful square little building in which we found the cavalry portable altar. And then below that, what have we uncovered? We've uncovered a scola and a building that is exactly the same in outer structure, but does not have any ovens in. And then below that, 
we've gone again under those layers and uncovered the beginning of the remains of the roundhouses, one timber and one stone. And finally, we've ventured into the Antonine period between 160 and 200 AD and uncovered a rather stunning building which promises a lot of more and more beautiful finds. We've also opened a little sondage in the anaerobic to cooperate with the University of Edinburgh and to research the turf and the timber structures that support the ramparts, the defensive mounds at Vindolanda. And that's given us a glimpse, a taster, if you will, of what's to come. We've had some amazing find this season and I'm going to leave you to some of our finest from the 2021 excavation season. Hello, my name is Leslie and I've been coming to Vindolanda now for 10 years. Um, really, really enjoy my time here every time I come. So yesterday, excavating um, pretty much where I'm standing, I found this really beautiful piece of tile. Initially, when I first started excavating, all I could see were the two prints at the top and I thought it actually belonged to the person that had done the tile. And when I actually got it out of the ground a bit further, um, took it over to Andrew, asked him to, do I need to do anything special with this? And he said, it's an animal print. You need to go and wash it off in the water tank, bring it back to me. Washed it off, washed all the mud off as much as I could. And there and behold is this beautiful paw print from a dog. It's just, it's, yeah, it's quite stunning actually. Thank you.